Hello and welcome to this next lesson in using Unity to create a GPS based AR app for your phone. In the last lesson we created this Android app where we could track the current location and we could just store that data and measure the distance between them. In this next one we're going to look at how we can create the pass through and then hopefully instantiate objects into 3D space and maybe even store the actual GPS locations of a bunch of objects that we could store into a text file that we could then import into another app at a later stage. Okay, so let's get started. I'm going to leave this scene alone just in case I want to come back to it. I'm going to create a new scene. Oops, I need to press stop first. I'm going to create a new scene. Yep, 3D as always. Um, I'm going to come back. I'm going to create a UI in a little while. The first thing I need to do is create our AR camera. So I'm going to delete the camera from scene. We don't want to use that because that's not going to hook up to your accelerometers. Um, I need to go onto the window package manager. Now if you've watched any of my previous AR tutorials, I'm using the same libraries. Now what I need to use, if I click on AR5 packages include, I don't want all of these. Obviously if I'm creating Android, I don't need Apple, I don't need Magic Leap, so I'm just going to put these in manually. So I'm just going to scroll down, if you're not sure, I've clicked on the Unity registry list. I'm just going to come down here, find the Google AR one which should be under G, there we go, Google AR. Now this is currently 5.0.7, no doubt we'll install it, it'll tell me there's a much newer version. Um, I'll probably stick with this one for the moment because I know it works. Okay, now that just took a few minutes to install. Now if you can't see 5.0.7, you can just sort of type this in manually by going onto the add package by name. So you can type it in manually there, and then the version number into that one. I know some older version of Unity, it doesn't have it listed, it's just version 4. Um, okay, so the next one I want to do is, is the AR Foundation. So I've got, oh, sorry, I've done that automatically. I've got AR Foundation now, and I've got Google AR, so it's already done it automatically. That was good. Okay, so we've now got that set up. I can now right-click XR, and I can say I want the AR session, and I can right-click, and I can say XR... XR Origin Mobile AR and that's going to give us the camera that's hooked up to your mobile phone camera. Um, let's have a quick look what we've got and there we go there's our main camera itself now. Um, it's just black so there's nothing to see at the moment. Okay now I've got the um, ca camera and things in I'm just going to go into File, Build Settings, Player Settings and I'm going to click onto XR Plugin and just say I want Google AR Core for this. So I just went to build and compile, but it's come with some error messages, which I've covered in a, in a video quite some time ago, but let's go and fix it. And what it doesn't want is auto, so I'm going to turn the auto off, and we're going to remove Vulkan. So again, we're under the player settings, I can just remove Vulkan, and then we'll go and try again. Now if we notice, it's still giving us another warning. So if we just have a little read through, it's saying to make some changes in the settings. So let's go and have a quick look at that. So build settings again. Player settings, just move that to the side so we can still see what's going off, and it says come down to the other scripting back end, select ARM64. So let's come down here to where it says that target arch architecture. Uh, currently, there's nothing selected, but it does say select um, IL2CPP. So I'm going to come up here to scripting back end, flick that over to that. It's going to change that, and now I can say ARM64. And um, when I close this down, it should start recompiling. Um, and hopefully that should now work. So if I just do a quick build test, build and run. Now in previous experience, this can take a while. So I'm going to press the pause in the video. Okay, so we can see that that has worked. So we've got camera feed and accelerometers. So we know that is compiling. That's our hello world type thing sorted out. So that took about 10 minutes to compile. Now let's just make sure we've got 3D object and it's staying where it should be before we even worry about sort of real world placement. So if I just grab a quick sphere, nothing fancy, um, that's in zero zero coordinates, it's right where the camera is. Um, I'm just going to drag that forward a little bit, so there we go, we can see it in space. Um, just in case your scene hasn't come through by default, just so you can see what I have done on my camera, I have set it to be a solid colour black ground back, or it did it automatically for me on this project, but in previous projects I've had to do that manually, and that just makes sure we don't have anything in the background. I'm sure some of you know, standard Unity has the sky box built in, but this one is, is currently turned off. Okay, so let's uh, do a quick compile of that, and make sure we can see this 3D object. So same again, build and run, uh, yep, save changes. Okay, we can see that the actual sphere 
is stuck to the screen as though nothing's happening. So let's fix that. Okay, so when you installed the AR Core, it might have asked you if you wanted to allow uh, old and new input devices, and you may have said press yes or no. Uh, I just press no because of speed. So what I'm going to do now is go into player settings. I'm going to come back down to get yeah, on player. I'm going to find the input. I always seem to sort of scroll past it. So let's see if we can find it. Okay, there we go. We have got our uh, active input handling old. I'm just going to change this to both, and this should allow us to use both UI and the accelerometers of the device. But again, it's going to restart the whole thing, so let's wait for that to reboot. So now we can see that it is tracking, it's leaving the sphere where it should, uh, more or less. And now we should be ready for our next step. Okay, so we'll get rid of that sphere for now because we don't actually need it. We're going to create uh, an empty, which is going to be our GPS handler just like in the last video. I'm going to drag our script on. Lost my script. There it is. I'm going to drag my script on. So this is obviously expecting us to have a debug text which I've not got so I just need to very quickly create the new canvas. Um, there we go. There's our canvas. I'm going to create the text box. No, text Mesh Pro. I'm going to drag that down to the bottom this time just because I kind of want to have, have some visuals further up possibly um, okay so we should now be able to click on our GPS handler it's obviously expects a text box let's drag the text box across uh, I've not got any buttons this time so I'm not going to worry about hooking those up I will just lock this to the bottom center if not didn't work too well last time um, and I'm also going to set the scale mode Set the scale mode, go into canvas, screen space, no, can leave that alone, can't I? Uh, constant pixel size, scale with screen, um, yeah, that'll do for the moment. Text box, again, I'll just stretch that again. I hope that that actually cooperates. Ah, it'll do, it'll do. Okay, so let's try and do something a bit more useful. I'm going to try and make like a hotter, colder, a treasure hunt type thing. So as you get close to the GPS, you can see you're close to it, and then when you get within a certain proximity, we'll see something appear on screen. So I'm just going to comment out this code because we don't need to see the exact GPS location. Um, I'm just going to still store where I currently am. Uh, I'm not going to worry about that line because we don't need that anymore. Uh, measuring distance, because we're not storing, we're not going to use that either. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go onto the maps and let's just pretend this is where I'm going to be. If I right click, and just say, uh, grab this pick on the coordinates. This is going to give me the GPS for this little area just here. Um, I'm going to just paste that in. So there's the GPS that I want to be closer to. So if I get within a certain distance of those coordinates, it's going to pop up on screen. So I'm going to sort of just repeat this little bit of code. Uh, I'm going to have that as well. So I'm going to come down there. I don't need this statement right now. I'm going to say distance between my current location, current longitude. But now I want uh, that coordinate instead. Uh, I'm going to grab that coordinate. Now I could, I could create a small program to strip this and rebuild it, but we'll do that for now. That should be okay. Um, so it's now going to measure that distance. It will output the distance on screen. So we can see whether we're getting hotter or colder, closer or further away, and slowly sort of walk around until we find the spot. Now I can say if uh, distance between is less than, now I've just been outside and checked, and it's basically, if it's less than zero, 0,1, um, then I can do something about it. Um, you might have to play about, depends on the accuracy of your phone, accuracy of GPS. But I just went outside and realized um, this is, should be enough. And now I can make something pop up on screen. I can pop, pop up a little thing that we could maybe make interactive. Okay, so I'm back in Unity. I've just grabbed the monkey head from, from Blender. Let's have a quick look at that. There we are, we're sort of that size, facing the way I'm not too happy about. Uh, it'll do so we can see it's covering the camera a little bit, but I will leave it at zero, 00 coordinates for the moment, or shall I? Yeah, well, I'll leave it at zero, 00 coordinates. I'm not happy with the colour, so let's create a quick material. So create uh, material colour. Come on, we can do this. Uh, I want a nice sort of bright. Should we go for gold? We'll go for sort of a gold sort of colour. Uh, I'll just make it nice and shiny. 
and I can drag that onto Susie or Susanna she used to be called oops not going across there we go um, which way you face is going to be up to you it's your 3d model you obviously play by what I'm going to turn around um, and now I'm going to drag Susie back onto there to make a prefab uh, we're having to create a prefab that's not what I was expecting to see never mind it'll do okay so now I can go back into my code I'm going to come back up here I'm going to create a public uh, yeah, we'll, go, we'll go right to the very top public um, game object um, I'm just going to say geo for now because I'm being lazy geo obviously you might want to start renaming these things yourself I can press save jump back into unity itself the code should update on our handler look back on my GPS handler and we can see we've now got a game object so I can grab Susie onto there big concern it's not the right colour uh, we'll figure that out later if it doesn't quite work how I'm expecting. So now, now when, when we get close, we should see Susie pop up on screen in the zero, 00 coordinate. So maybe I should have adjusted that a little bit. Maybe I could click and just push the Y coordinates up a little bit. So it appears about 1.5 meters uh, off the ground. So it might be getting close to your eye line. So these coordinates are, are important. That's where they'll instantiate. Okay. Now I've just had a thought. If I try and create the object here, this frame, it's going to try and do it every single frame. So really what I need to do is create a quick variable to say whether it's been created yet or not. Um, so I'm just going to put bool um, created geo equals false. Oops, spelled that wrong. I'm going to jump, jump down here and just sort of say if um, created game object equal equals false now I can start to instantiate that object that we actually want. Um, obviously I'll also need to go create go equals true. So it only does it just once. You could have then of course say if you've gone too far away you can delete it again so it removes it and of course later on we can create full lists of these but that will be beyond the scope of today. Okay so we've got the boolean for, for created go equals true. We're now going to instantiate our game objects. We're going to create it into existence. I'm also just going to add a little bit more text where I'm just going to say debug.txt, so I'm just going to copy and paste again, I'm lazy, um, and I'm going to, you know, be quick to type it, and I'm just going to sort of say found object one. Okay, so that should be enough for our code now, um, I think that's all we really need. So back in Unity, um, I just sort of deleted deleted the Suze from the actual window. We don't need that there, otherwise it's going to be there automatically. There's one other setting that I remembered from a previous project I did, which is sometimes the camera would go upside down. Um, so I'm just going back into the player settings, uh, auto rotation, and I'm just going to force it to be portrait mode. So I hope that should stop it from flipping upside down. Um, okay, so I think it's time for our actual little test now. Will it work? Okay, so we can see that I'm outside, chugging down with rain, so I've not gone to where I planned. But here we go, we can see the distance. If I walk a bit closer, it takes a bit of time to update. There we go, it came up for a moment saying it's found, but let's have a quick look round. There we go, we can see our AR object. So we do know it's there. Hopefully if I walk a bit closer, it should get a bit close to the camera. So I can kind of walk round it. Okay, time to go back inside. Okay, I'm back inside from the rain. So hopefully we've seen from that that we can basically create, like I said, some form of GPS treasure hunt where we could give clues and hints to where the next item might be found. Um, in future videos we will look at actually using genuine GPS locations to spawn items into those places. Um, we'll try and create something like maybe a sort of scoring system. But as always, if you found any part of this video useful, please remember to like, subscribe, positive comment below, any suggestions for future content, and I shall see you in the next video. Okay, we saw one minor thing. We just saw that found object flash for a millisecond and vanished. It's fairly obvious, really. This only runs once when it finds that object. So if I was just to sort of cut that, move it outside that if statement, it should be fine. It should now stay on screen. Obviously, if you are doing multiple objects, you'll need a, a more sophisticated handling system. But that's something we can look at in a future video.